are photovoltaic technology. You know, there are two methods to convert solar energy into useful energy, one of which has been already described in detail, the various technologies, application level, the challenges and the solutions. That is solar thermal energy. We have seen towards the end of the solar thermal technology, the low, medium and high temperature power generation systems from solar thermal part of the energy from solar radiation. Today, we are going to discuss about photovoltaic technology, which is the light part of solar radiation, how to convert that into electricity directly without undergoing the restrictions of second law of thermodynamics. So as all of you know, the photoelectric effect relies on the principle that whenever light strikes the surface of certain metals, not all the metals, only certain metals, electrons are released from the surface of the metal. Right? Whenever light strikes the surface of certain metals, electrons are released and electrons obviously will move, will get attracted to the positive side of the atom right so in the pn junction suppose you have an n type wafer treated with phosphorus for example has extra electrons which flow into the holes of the p type layer so there is a pn junction there will be p type holes and this n type so there will be p and n type layers on a pn junction this junction of this p type and n type is called a junction right so whenever the such a wafer treated with phosphorus will be having some extra electrons which flow into the holes of p-type layer that has been treated with boron. So this is an example, right? So whenever there is a p-n junction of such specifically made, the name is diode, right? Photoelectric diode. So whenever light strikes on the p-n junction, what will happen? There will be a continuous movement of the N and P type of electrons from the N layer to the P layer and etc. So you can see in the diagram here, this is a PN junction. This is extra electrons in the N layer. This is extra holes in the P layer. Okay. So whenever light strikes here, what will happen? This extra electrons in the N layer will have the tendency to go and fill in this extra holes in the P layer. So this is the simple cross-sectional view of the construction of a photovoltaic cell. There will be an anti-reflection coating and there will be a transparent adhesive and there is a covering glass to protect the material of the cell. Then there is a photovoltaic cell comprising of n-type semiconductor and p-type semiconductor and at the bottom we have a back contact and a substrate and the circuit is completed by maintaining the connection between the n and p to the current to the grid or battery or whatever it is. So what we are going to get out of this is direct current. If you want to convert that into alternating current, you may have to employ an inverter. So this simply happens whenever light strikes on a photovoltaic cell. So for example, phosphorus top n type silicon layer of the uh, order of the given dimension. So P type and N type. N type is phosphorus top and the P type is boron top. So there will be DC current flow. Now you can see a number of photovoltaic cells arranged into a module and an array of. So here the reaction, what is happening is the light energy is converted to directly to electricity. There is no intermediate stage here. So sunlight is the catalyst of the reaction 
the output current of this reaction is direct current as I mentioned earlier. The amount of energy produced is directly proportional to the amount of sunlight put in. So input is sunlight and the output is electrical energy. So but when compared to solar thermal energy it is efficient but still the efficiency maximum efficiency obtained is of the order of 30 percentage with the latest technologies with very thin rollable solar photovoltaic films have been developed with that the researchers were able to obtain an efficiency of 30 percentage maximum so let us go to the basics of photovoltaic cells and we will see the terminology of photovoltaic system so you need to study only that much we won't be discussing further related to them and we will see the IV characteristics of the photovoltaic cell etc. The semiconductor of transparent positive silicon and negative silicon backing that is a simply a photovoltaic cell. Most commonly employed semiconductor to make photovoltaic cell or PV cell is silicon. So incoming light or the photons cause energized electrons from the n-type region to the as I as we have seen from n type n holes to the uh, I mean n electrons to p holes. So a nominal voltage of 0.55 volts requires serious connections to get useful voltage of 17 volts. Now the short circuit current so SC current, ISC, short circuit current is usually represented by ISC, subscript SC. It is proportional to the intensity of light which has been incident on the surface of the solar cell. So a photovoltaic cell is a basic device that converts solar radiation into electricity. So you can see uh, the other uh, circuit diagram here, N, P, the base, metallization, the different things on the top, glass, contact, and your reflective coating, as we have seen in the cross-sectional view, right? So there will be a very thick n-type crystal and covered by a very a thin n-type layer exposed to sunlight as shown in the following figure you can see here. So it can be of any shape, square or circular. Most commonly you might have seen both of these circular or square. So cells are arranged in a frame to form a module. So whenever a number of cells are arranged in a rectangular manner on a board, that is called a module. Modules put together form a panel. Now a number of panels can see connected parallelly can form an array. So each PV cell, a single circular or square geometry PV cell is rated for 0.5 to 0.7 volt and a current of 30 milliamps per centimeter square. So the solar cells are classified based on the manufacturing process as polycrystalline, amorphous or monocrystalline cells. Polycrystalline, amorphous or monocrystalline. So you can see the examples as monocrystalline silicon, polycrystalline silicon or amorphous silicon. So solar cell is the smallest basic photovoltaic device that generates electricity when exposed to light. PV module is the series and parallel connected solar cells normally of 36 watt peak watts rating. So peak watt rating will be 36 watts of a module. So an array, photovoltaic array is a series and parallel connected PV modules generally consisting of generally it is five modules. So a solar cell delivers different amount of current depending on the irradiation. So how much amount of solar light falls on the photovoltaic cell will decide how much current a solar cell is developed. So this is uh, a cell, module, then panel and I mean array and panel like that. 
okay, three panel and array. Okay. This is a solar cell, it can be circular or square. It is arranged C in series and parallel, forms a module, then a panel, uh, an array, and panel. Okay. This is an array of modules, it's a panel. So these are the different components of a solar photovoltaic system. So you can see here, solar energy is falling on this a, a photovoltaic array, then uh, the DC disconnect, there could be an inverter to convert DC into AC so many electronic and electrical components finally to get the utility grid it can be used you might have seen in the traffic signals and the street lamps solar photovoltaic cells and an installed battery associated battery so in the daytime the solar cells will be generating electricity and it will get stored in a battery during the night time or whenever it is uh, the weather is bad during the dark time when the ambient light is decreasing automatically it will get activated and you can see the lights are glowing not only the street lamps and traffic lights in the even the reflectors on the major national highways are uh, backed up with uh, solar energy so that's all from the solar photovoltaic part and from the module 2 so in the coming week you can expect a test based on module 2 similar to, similar to what we have conducted earlier based on module 1 you can have a test based on module 2 in the coming week that is um, the week starting from 12th Okay, we have a seminar also uh, from 13th. So in that week, you can expect a test based on module 2. So be prepared. We have one week time to prepare.